So we have a question about um, basically, I think general strikes. Um, do you see the capacity for a nationwide strike, or is that light years of intensive organizing away? Is it a potentially useful strategy? And so I think this question gets at the general strike, and I'm glad we have a chance to talk about this. And I feel like ever since Occupy, it seems like at least every few months, the left is calling for a general strike that never happens. And so first, what is a general strike? So a general strike is basically if all workers in a certain location, whether it's a city, a state, or maybe even a whole country go on strike. And you could say it's the ultimate labor action, the ultimate expression of class unity and militancy short of a revolution. And you can define it in different ways. Maybe not every worker in a city goes on strike, but every unionized worker does. I think that would still count. So we've never had in this country a nationwide uh, general strike. We've had general strikes in certain cities. Um, in 1919, there was the Seattle general strike where actual Soviet style things were set up. In 1934, there were three general strikes in Minneapolis, San Francisco, and Toledo. And um, many historians believe these strikes are what really forced the hand of FDR to sign the National Labor Relations Act that gave workers the right to organize unions. Um, right after World War II, there was a strike wave that featured a few more general strikes in cities. Um, and in Europe, during like the debt crisis of the 2010s, some countries like Greece had over 15 general strikes in response to austerity imposed by the European Central Bank. And often, but not always, general strikes are political in nature. Like what's been happen happening in Myanmar, where the general strike is for an authoritarian, authoritarian regime to step down. And it seems like forever ago, but I think there was some interesting potential during the government shutdown under Trump uh, when Sarah Nelson raised the idea of a general strike to end it. And it ended up ending well before that. I think there are actually a relatively small amount of airline workers that took action and the, um, the the shutdown ended after that. And I think it was interesting to ponder the possibility if Trump refused to step down after losing the election, if there could have been some kind of general strike. But the, you know, I think for me, the main problem is general strikes cannot be willed into existence by a left that is disconnected from the labor movement. Um, and often general strikes have happened in very exceptional situations or when the labor movement is coming from a position of strength. And there, they aren't really something I think that you can methodically plan for and work up towards. Like this year, we're gonna organize this many workers and then work up to a general strike. They, they often just don't work out that way. And you know, the, the last time um, Jane McAlee was on the show, she raised kind of an interesting idea about, instead of thinking about general strikes, she su suggested we think about um, you know, a strike across a specific sector or company within a specific region. So for example, um, you know, nurses across a hospital chain in a state or a region going on strike. And that is still incredibly ambitious, but I think it's more achievable and in a period of decline and retreat like we are now. And, um, and whether you are trying for that kind of strike or a general strike, it, it still can't happen without the left being involved in the labor movement. And most of the time, the calls for general strikes are happening on Twitter. Something happens and someone will tweet out, why isn't there a general strike happening? And that's just not how it works. And so, you know, don't get me wrong. I would absolutely love to wake up tomorrow and be proven wrong and for a general strike to happen. And, you know, a lot of spontaneous, unpredictable things have happened and can still happen. And I think, you know, in, in certain cities, in certain areas right now, I think quietly behind the scenes, you have some savvy leftists that are becoming more embedded in the institutional labor movement, um, becoming in positions of power in like central labor councils. So maybe there is a city out there where um, those same people could move towards a general strike if there was a certain flare up um, around a certain issue. So I don't wanna be a complete naysayer about it, but I think the left needs to get out of this habit of calling for a general strike as a reflex to, to everything that happens. They just don't work that way. And I think we're in a period now of rebuilding the labor movement, rebuilding existing unions, helping them win strong contracts and beating back concessions. And I think it makes more sense to focus there instead of a general strike. Um, so those are my thoughts on, on that issue. Um, I don't know, Jen, what do you think? Yeah, I uh, totally agree. I mean, you know, going back to what you said just at the beginning of of this segment, how you know the labor the uh, the labor movement, or I'm sorry, uh, union members are still 12 million strong. Any call for any kind of uh, mass strike 
I just think has to start with the labor movement. Uh, and, you know, with the exception of the Sarah Nelson example that you mentioned, like the vast majority of calls for a general strike over, you know, since the Occupy days, as you said, to now have been made by commentators or, you know, left wing activists. And I don't doubt the good intentions. I mean, we all know how powerful strikes are. We all know that strikes are the most powerful tool that workers hold. And, you know, that is obviously not to be discounted. Um, but that said, like, I don't think that a literature professor at Bard calling for a general strike on Twitter, which is like definitely a thing that happened like in the early days of the Trump administration, like I'm not making this up as like yeah. a hyperbolic example like that, like that just to me, to me, again, the intentions might be good, but at its very worst, it kind of reeks of this, um, it kind of it kind of has this feeling of like wake up sheeple, right? Like, right. hey, did yeah. you all hear about, a, did you all hear what strikes can do? Like, we should all do this. And again, I, I just want to reiterate, like, I don't think that the intentions are necessarily bad, um, but I think that you can't, as you say, just will something into being because you had a good idea or like, think that it might work and without putting in the, you know, years, if not decades of organizing work that it takes to make something like this happen. Um, like you said, right. I mean, a, a spontaneous eruption could happen. I'm not like willing it out. Yeah. And like, <laughs> if nobody goes to work tomorrow, like I won't either, but. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think it's an interesting question because I think some people will hear that and be like, well, what have we planned for it? And, mm. and general strikes are also, I think, interesting because often they don't happen that way either. It's True. not, yeah. you know, whereas I could maybe see a scenario of like, well, I don't know, a nurses union making a three to five year plan of like organizing a certain chain. And mm. often unions do plan that far ahead of their serious. That I can see happening. But general strikes, I think, are, are kind of this weird beast unless you're at a plate. I think unless you're at a, a position where some of these unions in, in different places, like I mentioned in Europe and other countries that have this very strong labor tradition where that's just been part of what they do. Mm -hmm. I think that's a different situation. Um, and again, like when there was austerity in Europe, many countries, I mean, they had something like 15 general strikes. A lot of times, a lot of times there were one day or two day strikes. You know, I think that's different. That's kind of built into the culture and just sadly, yeah. we're just like nowhere near, near there yet. Right. You know? So, so what you're saying is if, if we can do one, <laughs> then we're right. setting ourselves up for maybe in the future doing them more and more. But I do think if we stood in front of um, workplaces with less our little newsletters, yeah. right. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, since you bring that up, like, I think one reason why, you know, as you say, every couple of months, like <laughs> the left is calling for a general strike uh, again, you know, a, it is kind of this recognition of the power of strikes and B, people really want to do something, you know, and it's hard to be right. like, well, just like continue organizing and like, I don't know, like talk to people in your workplace or whatever. Um, but like, right. I think it's important to remember like that's something too, you know, like go like, you know, see if you can get involved in a runaway inequality workshop in your workplace or something. Um, right. It's not as grandiose as a general strike, uh, but I feel like in many ways, it's just as, if not more important. I mean, right. you know, doing the small steps and, and kind of building up to something bigger. Right. Yeah. And one other thing I'll say, I mean, what was kind of interesting to me thinking about the elect presidential election. Um, and again, I think it was kind of interesting pondering whether if Trump really did some crazy shit, how labor would respond. And this is what is kind of interesting about Sarah Nelson, who does have credibility and labor movement. She, she came up through the ranks and, you know, uh, kind of just putting these ideas out there. And I, I always thought about with the election, you know, it would be something where labor might be willing to take that risk because it was for something very, I think, within the balance, meaning like protect, you know, protecting the Democrats uh, getting elected as they should have for a democratic election. Um, so I don't know. It was just interesting to think about again, yeah. obviously it didn't happen, but um yeah, I just don't think it's very productive to keep just like calling for it or wondering when it will happen. You know, I just don't think it's going to happen that way. Have you ever participated in a call? For, or I mean, like people, like as you're saying, you know, people call for general strikes all the time. Have you ever taken the day off? I know I definitely have. <laughs> like in the early Occupy days, like that, like May 1st, 2011 or whatever. Right. Damn, that's like 10 years <laughs> ago at this point. Um, 
But yeah, when, you know, people were calling for a general strike, I definitely like called in sick that day. Oh, really? you know? I yeah. didn't. I have been part of a sick out. And okay, that's another yeah. thing. I mean, again, I, yeah, there's like yeah. so many other things that are below a general strike that are mm -hmm. hard enough to do, you know? Right. Yeah, exactly. So, like, that's why sometimes I don't understand why we're always going for. From like zero to a like hundred. My first day in the NBA, I'm not going to try to break the world <laughs> record. Like I'm just right. not. Right. Yeah. <laughs>